Hi, and welcome back to a guide to surviving stroke and brain injury. We're on to number six in our stroke series, and this one we're going to cover occipital lobe. So the occipital lobe is located in the rear portion of the cerebral cortex. It's primary, primarily responsible for visual functions. It is part of the brain where visual information is processed. After it is processed, visual information leaves the occipital lobe via two major pathways, the dorsal stream and the ventral stream. The ventral stream is a pathway that leads to the temporal lobe. It carries information related to object form, color, and recognition. Essentially, it helps the temporal lobe determine what you see. The dorsal stream, on the other hand, carries information about where object, objects are in space. It flows into the parietal lobe, where it is further processed. As you can see, the occipital, parietal, and temporal lobes interact closely together. Therefore, the symptoms of occipital lobe damage can overlap with those associated with parietal or temporal lobe damage. If you want to see, I, I already did videos on these two, so you can kind of see if they relate. The symptoms of the occipital lobe damage involve vision and perception problems. The most common symptom of occipital lobe damage is blindness and visual distortions, such as hallucinations. But there are several other symptoms a person can experience as well. Number one is partial blindness. Central vision loss is a symptom of occipital lobe damage. Parietal, par, I'm sorry, partial blindness happens when only a portion of your visual environment is impaired. Partial blindness can manifest in several different ways, including, okay, here we go again, hemian opposia, Sorry, it's half of your visual field, either horizontally or vertically, is gone completely. Quadrantanopia is a quarter of your vision field is lost. Peripheral vision can be also lost. And that's the outer vision of your field. I'm outer field of your vision. <laughs> I had a stroke, can you notice? <laughs> and central vision loss. The middle of your vi vision field is lost, but the peripheral vision is fine. So if you're looking forward, there's a big block that is cut out that you cannot see. It's like black. You can also develop something called hominus, hominumus, hom, H O M O Y M O U S, hemiaposia. This occurs when the same part of the vision field is lost in both eyes. For example, the left half of your vision will be gone on both your right and left eyes. Number two, word blindness, which I didn't even know was a thing, but it's called alexia. Occipital lobe damage also leads to an inability to read or recognize written words. It occurs when visual information from the occipital lobe cannot pass to the areas of the brain that process language. It's similar to receptive aphasia, except it doesn't affect the ability to understand spoken words. Instead, looking at a piece of writing would just look like strange lines and symbols. That's scary. Number three is color agnosia. Occipital lobe damage can make it harder to recognize colors. Color agnosia is similar to normal color blindness, except whereas color blindness affects color perception, color agnosia affects color knowledge. So you may recognize it as being red, but you can't understand that it's red. Does that make sense? With color agnosia, the mechanism in the eye that enables a person to see color remain intact but the person could not tell you what color they see. That, this means that the person with color agnosia would be able to pass a normal color blindness test, but they couldn't tell you 
what color a banana is, for example. Number four is akinetopsia. It's otherwise known as motion blindness. <laughs> but I'm butchering these names. This recognition causes a person to not perceive motion in their visual field. Instead, you might see motion as a series of stills, like something moving under a strobe light. In severe cases, you, may not, you might not be able to detect motion at all, but your vision of stationary objects will still be intact. Number five is simultaneognosia, or otherwise called as Bolin's syndrome. This symptom makes it almost impossible for a person to perceive more than one object at a time. It is common after both parietal and occipital lobe damage. For example, a person with Bolin syndrome who looked at a house may only see a door or window instead of the whole house. They also could not see their fork if they were looking at their plate. Other symptoms include op optic ataxia. Difficulty reaching for an object you were looking at. Ocular apraxia is the inability to move your eyes in a coordinated, powerful way. For example, moving your eyes towards a specific object. So, just like I turn the page on my paper, I would have problems moving my eyes towards the paper. A person with Blin syndrome would also be unable to read because they could only process one letter at a time, which is horrible. Treatment is going to an optometrist checking vision of a patient with damage to the occipital lobe. To deal with that damage, your best course is to start occupational therapy, which can help you learn effective compensatory tactics. In addition, some treatments that might help you recover include like people with word blindness can utilize strategies that many blind patients use, uh, to, like text-to-speech or braille, for example. Uh, your vision might recover, and there have been stories and studies done that they have recovered. So again, hope, faith. So number one is eye exercises. These exercises engage your brain's neuroplasticity and can help improve vision. Scanning therapy. This therapy helps patients to visual field loss learn to compensate by scanning their environment more effectively. And prismatic adaptation which I have prism glasses. During this treatment, the patient wears special prismatic glasses that shift the visual field to one side, forcing the person to look towards the affected side in order to reach an object. It is effective for those with hemispatial neglect or hemianopsia. <laughs> Sorry. This therapy helps retrain the brain to process vision on the affected side. It works best when combined with visual scanning training. Training. I don't know what's up with my speech today, but I'm so sorry. Take part in, to take part in the scanning therapy and other treatments for occipital lobe damage, make an appointment with a certified vision rehabilitation specialist Typically, a neurooptometrist. So, when you go see your neurologist, ask for that specifically. Even though they might not cure your vision loss, they can help make living with it a little bit easier. So, the key points to this to remember are damage to the occipital lobe can cause blindness and other visual distortions, including hallucination. Although living with visual problems can be difficult, Therapists and neurooptometrists can help you to adapt and make things a little bit easier. And vision therapy techniques might also help you improve the vision you still have. Keep in mind that the brain is remarkably adaptive. With enough therapy, it can actually rewire 
nerve cells to allow undamaged brain regions to take over the functions from damaged ones, which means even if you have severe opti occipital lobe damage, you might still regain your sight after brain injury. So good luck to you. Remember, always celebrate every victory, literal or small, and never give up hope and faith. And if you have any questions or comments, or if I forgot to mention something, please leave it in the, in the comments section below. Thank you.